When I first started getting involved, it angered me. It doesn't anymore. People are afraid. And they're embarrassed, and that's just the makeup of human beings. Some are stronger than others. It's the stronger should be there to lift up the weaker, not to criticize, not to embarrass, not to, to make them feel out of place. And this comes from a lifetime of mistakes. I saw a video, and a gentleman was talking about Ernest Hemingway, and he said that Ernest Hemingway was given a challenge to write a story on a bet for $10, but he could only use six words to tell an entire story. He was a word master. So he took a piece of paper and he wrote six words down. And he gave the paper back. And it said, for sale, baby shoes never worn. That was the story. Because in those six words, you knew everything that you needed to know. Well, we all share one story. And it is six words. And it's, I won't give up on you. And when I say that, I'm not necessarily talking to those that are in recovery. I'm talking to you. Because we tend to always give up on ourselves. Those that are struggling with addiction feel unloved. They feel despair. Because in the end, you can put up all the graphs and you can tell all the stories. But there's one common truth that resides in every single individual sitting in this room, is we all just want to be loved. That's all we want. And we seek it out. We need it. We don't just want it, we need it. I didn't see it. I looked at life from a strong and a weak perspective. And I got the phone call that no parent wants. That's a lottery you don't want to win. So two things happen when you lose a loved one. Your brain is not wired to lose a child. We're not taught that. We're taught we'll lose parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins and siblings but they don't teach us how to cope with losing a child. We're not wired that way. So we have two choices when that happens. We can give up. And let me tell you something, if you haven't lost a child, giving up is an option. It's a real option because the pain become so insurmountable that anything, anything is better than breathing one more breath in the state that you're in. Or you can choose to be a better you. Because unfortunately, and I'm sorry to tell you, there are some lessons in life that only can be learned through suffering. Those are the, the lessons that we want to avoid. Those are the things when we pray, we always ask, protect my family. Keep us healthy. Because the fear of loss, and it is a real fear, affects everyone. What is addiction? I don't know. I don't know. The doctor has an opinion. 
The life coach has an opinion. The officer has an opinion. The councilman has an opinion. You have an opinion. I have an opinion. I'll tell you what I do know. I know despair is real. I know loneliness is real. I know feeling like you are not worth anything is real. How do you fight it? I only know one way. I only know one thing that is strong enough, and it is the corniest thing in the world, but it is true, and it is love. It's the one thing that we all want but never can give, and that is unconditional love. We all crave it, but it's so difficult to give. I was so angry at my son. So angry. Who was he? Why? Why couldn't he just stop? Why can't you just stop? That was the phrase repeated from me over and over again. Why can't you just stop? You can't stop because I'm ignorant. But you don't know what you don't know until you know it. What do you do after that? It's those decisions, it's those choices that dictate the life that you will lead. And not just you, the life that you will inspire or you will destroy. Because when someone loves you, you have that power. You can inspire or you can destroy. So I come and I speak. I'm not an expert at anything. I'm an expert at failing. I'm a definite expert at that. I failed my son because I was ignorant, because I didn't know. So I get up here and I talk about him, which is difficult. But I hope that by hearing me, I don't feel guilty because I didn't know, but I was ignorant. I am telling you, you have the strength. You have it in you to lift your loved one up. And they have the strength to be lifted. They're in a cage that has no bars, but they can't leave. They need to know that they are worth it. Because I'm telling you, every time you tell them that they're not, and they hear it from everyone, they wake up one day and they go, I'm not worth it. And then, the worst thing that can happen is they feel like they are a burden to you. That's how my son felt. He said to me, everyone would be better if I was dead. That's how he felt. And I was angry. How dare you make that statement? You got a good family, you got a good life. How dare you? The truth was, how dare I? So I come up here and I say these things in the hope that you can hear me and that you don't make those mistakes. The mistake of not knowing now you know. You've been given every information. I sat here for, for two and a half hours, and I learned a ton. I learned that I am humbled by the speakers that came before me. I am humbled at the dedication and the work that they do. I, I personally, with my own eyes, seen a doctor on a 10-hour, 12-hour shift go out to a waiting room and speak to every single patient that was waiting to be seen. To reassure them, I didn't forget you. I'm here. Don't be afraid. Because fear controls us. And it shouldn't. But it does. Afraid of failure. Afraid of dying. Afraid of illness. The fear of letting your family down is the strongest fear those that are struggling with addiction feel. That's not your loved one. 
That is addiction. Recognize what it looks like. But your loved one is there begging to come out. Give them the strength to do that. Make a difference in them. Go on your phone. Everyone's, everyone is glued to their phone. Michelle, God bless you, put up a, a photo of everyone watching someone drown holding their phone. That is who we've become. Now, I can look at that picture two ways. I can look at it negatively. I can't even speak correctly. Negatively. And say that that's horrible. Or I can say, that's reality. How do I use the reality that I have to make it better? Social media is strong. Use it to let those that don't know you know that you care. Let those that are struggling in recovery know that there is always a door open. You know, I don't like to get religious. It turns people off, and I, and, and I won't now. I, I personally am, am spiritual, and, and I believe in God. I do. I, I do. I. I'm not telling you to believe in God. I'm telling you I believe in God. Someone said to me, do you think God gets mad when we do what we do and we hurt each other? And I thought, no, he doesn't. And I envision God looking at me, and there's a door. And that door is where I want to be. But he can't come down and tell me, hey, Tony, the door is right here. He has to sit and he has to watch me try all these doors, be my worst enemy, my biggest problem. While he looks and his heart breaks, because all he wants from me is to come home. You love your child. God doesn't give up on you. You cannot give up on them. I'm asking you for a very difficult thing. To tell you that you need to love them unconditionally. That you never can give up on them. I'm not saying that just to say it. I lived it. I know how difficult it is to make that happen. Because you just get tired. But they have to know that there is hope. That there is hope every day. And you have to spread the word. Not in a, not in a condescending manner. Not in shaming someone. You need to go out there tonight. You need to put these phones on. You need to FaceTime live when these brilliant people get up here and try to give solutions to these problems. We know what the problems are. Anybody can tell you what the problem is. It's the solution that we want to hear. And the solution is, in, is within you. It's not the, medical, the meds that the doctor's going to give you. It's not the pep talk that anyone can give you. It's within you. It's the love that you have within you is going to save your loved one and you. Because I heard earlier, we're all in recovery. We are. If our loved one is in recovery, we are in recovery. And you want to know something? No one seems to care about the family. And the family's carrying a lot of weight. A lot. A lot. I had someone in recovery come up to me and say, you know, I never looked at it from that perspective. I never saw it through the eyes of my parents. Because addiction is a selfish disease. And everyone is working so hard. And yes, I'm saddened by the amount of people that are here. But I'm also hopeful that those that are here are strong and dedicated and will take everything they've learned here tonight with them so that no other parent gets that phone call. No loved one is taken from us. I wish everyone could die from old age. I do. But that's not life. 
but take the suffering that you are going through where you feel hopeless and turn that into the strength that you need to be a better you. Because there are a lot of people that love you. And we don't see it. I thought my son saw it. He did it. One thing that sticks out, and I won't take up too much time because it's been a very long evening. He was working. I wanted to go see him. I drove to the front of the building where he was working. And I didn't see him in the window. I drove around the block and he was smoking a cigarette and he was on the side of the building. And he had a look of hopelessness. He had a look of no light. There was no light in his eyes. And I remember driving by, praying that God would take his pain away because I didn't know how to do it. You've been given more tools than I had. And that's not your fault. It's mine. I didn't look for it. Because we don't get involved until it affects us, in mo like most things in life. Don't throw away those tools. And believe me, there is nothing stronger than love. Nothing. We die for it. We stand in front of a bullet for it. That kind of power can really do anything. Leave a door open in your heart for those that are struggling and let them know that it's there. And never, ever, ever give up on them because it's too late when they're not here. Know that you've done what you can and let them know that they are worth it. And you're worth it. You are worth it. So please spread the word of love, of compassion, of strength from that love. And I promise you that not only will you be a better you, but you will make everyone around you a better them. God bless you very much.